wow, wow, wow. Three days. Three days, people. Three days until LSU play UCLA in the Rose Bowl. And, you know, I had I had something I was thinking about. And I couldn't help but think about it in the back of my head all throughout that um, LSU-UCLA Hurricane Ida relief fundraiser I did with uh, Tony Bruin of Tony Syracuse of Last Word on College Football. Absolute class act. And um, Mark Rogers, uh, Voice of College Football's uh, platform. And very, very grateful to those two guys for, for, for doing the, putting up with my um, benefit um, organization. I, I, I put all these uh, links together and um, I, I, you know, it took a bit, but it took some persuasion, but I got those links in that video. There was no point doing that video unless there was some Hurricane Ida relief. There was really no point. Um, it was not a day to be self-promoting. It was a day to promote uh, Louisiana and helping Louisiana. And I'm very grateful that they allowed that to happen. But, you know, there's something that just kept going around in the back of my head. You know, I'm just thinking, you know, UCLA just pummeled a team that St. James could, could win by 10, could beat by 10. Okay. UCLA just pummeled Hawaii like they should have. And I feel like they're be being given an Academy Award plus a BAFTA plus a Golden Globe plus a Pulitzer Prize for their for their performance. I feel like they've been given they're being way overrated here. I yes, UCLA should have a ton of confidence coming into this game. Yes, they have a high octane running get attack. Yes, uh, Chip Kelly is a great play caller. But has he been a great play caller in big games? Think about that. Has he really called the, the best plays in the, in the biggest games? Because we saw what happened when uh, Oregon, fresh off a national championship appearance, you know, top five team in the nation, went into battle LSU in Jerry World, and we saw that it was the Tyron Matthew game. It was the game where Tyron Matthew had already announced himself as a very dynamic freshman wearing the number 14. But when he strip sacked, I'm trying to remember the, the Oregon quarterback's name, Marcus Mariota maybe? I'm not sure if it was the Mariota years yet. But when he strip sacked that dude, and returned it for a touchdown, a star was born. And I feel like, you know, coming into that game, it was all about Oregon, all about Oregon, all about Oregon, and then LSU came in and kicked some ass. I'm not saying LSU's gonna absolutely destroy UCLA. My prediction is 38 to 28 LSU. So LSU are gonna have a little bit of some, some struggles on defense, just kind of figuring out everything. And that's to be expected. It's more of rust than anything, and, and, and maybe a gimme touchdown near the end of the game. I think LSU are going to take control of this game. Because here's the thing. I feel like LSU are being disrespected. Do you think so? Listen to the stuff the national media are, are talking about with LSU. They're focusing on things that have nothing to do with this team. They're focusing on 2019 and comparing this team to 2019. Comparing Max Johnson to Joe Burrow, comparing uh, Jake Peets to Joe Brady, um, comparing Kayshawn Butte to Jamar Chase. They can't stop the comparisons. They just can't stop it. Here's the comparison for you. Did Joe Burrow throw for over 450 yards, or sorry, 435 yards as a freshman on the road? Oh, wait, sorry, he didn't do that, do that on the road, but did he throw... 400, over 430 yards as a freshman. Joe Burrow did not. Did Jamar Chase catch over 300 yards receiving as a freshman? No. 
Kayshawn Butte did. Did Derek Stingley Jr. catch four or plus interceptions as a freshman? Yes, he did. He caught six. Did Eli Ricks catch four plus interceptions as a freshman? Yes, he did. And, he, and guess what? Both are back. Okay, you, Stingley may have had a down year, but he also uh, recovered two fumbles and forced another. Um, I think he only allowed, what was it, 6% completion rating, something like that, on his targets. It's a, you know absolute joke how good he was coverage-wise in 2020. But, you know, they like to focus on the little things like when he gets injured and little passes against Missouri. Um, of course, the Devontae Smith push-off posterized catch. Of course, of course. And, but they're throwing things in LSU's face that really aren't concerns for this team. And it just shows to me that I don't think the national media are really researching this LSU football team. Have you heard any national media rep talk about Jaqueline Roy? Have you heard any LSU, I mean, someone talking about LSU from the national media, have you heard them talk about uh, Sage Ryan being a freshman? Have you heard the national media even talk about how deep and sick the receiving core or the defensive line are? Think about it. All they're talking about is Coach O's on a hot seat. And whether this new staff can recreate 2019, here's a news flash for you. Nobody is recreating 2019. Okay? Not even Coach O or Drons LSU. If anybody's going to get close, it will be Coach Ed or Drons LSU, though. Just throw that to the side. 2019 has nothing to do with this season. We want to copy some of the things philosophically on offense, of course. But all this stuff, it's filtered through Max Johnson. We're not worried about Joe Burrow. This is about Max Johnson. Okay. This is about Kayshawn Butte. This is about whether Ty Davis Price, John Emery Jr., who who can be that running back? I know you have a pick. I know I have a pick. It's about, you know, this LSU team is stacked across the board full of talent. But more than that, experience. I mean, that O-line, the O-line for is, is probably the one of the biggest, probably the biggest concern on the team. And together, they have just, you know, our top six guys have just shy of 150 appearance, combined appearances for LSU. It's 147 appearances and 84 starts. Okay? That's crazy. So... This team has experience across the board. There's a lot of guys returning from the 2019 championship team. Maybe they were fringe guys on that team. But maybe they won't be in 2021. You know, I just... Do you sense the disrespect? I'm not trying to be some LSU homer, trying to say they're disrespecting LSU. How dare they? We're going to kick their ass back to Texas. Whatever. No, like... I'm just being honest here. As a pure college football fan, you you know football, okay? You know great athletes when you see them, right? You know a great staff when you see it. Either these analysts are just not paying attention or they want LSU to fail. You know, if they want to say LSU are going to lose a few games this year, fine. Okay, that's your opinion. All right. But to say that this team doesn't have a chance to contend in the SEC, to say that this team is only favored by a touchdown or less over UCLA, I feel like it's, you know, trying to say that 
people like Max Johnson are unproven is just ridiculous. Max Johnson is not unproven. Okay, he was thrown in the fire into the swamp and on his freshman starting debut. And people want to say, oh, he only started two games. We only have a two-game sam- sample size. But we do, that's not true. He had countless cameos throughout the season. And every time he came into those games, he made LSU look inherently better. <laughs> okay? And when, you know, you got people saying, Eli Ricks, who's this guy? Who's this guy? Like, he didn't intercept four passes and take two to the house last year. As if he only, you know, he only allowed six catches all season from just 19 targets. You're going to try and tell me that guy isn't the number two corner in the nation behind Derek Stingley Jr.? Get out of here. There's just a lot of LSU hate going about. And, and you, you LSU fans, we're going to have to take it. Because we went 5-5 five and five last year. One of the worst performances by a defending champion ever. We're going to have to just take it. But guess what? That's why when we beat the living hell out of UCLA, it's going to feel so good. Because after all that's happened, with Hurricane Ida devastating parts of parts of Louisiana with you know it seeming like federal help is so far off or even the local governments don't know what the hell they're doing you know it feels like same old story Louisiana is on their own and so you know what I, I think this is perfect because Coach Ed Ordron is going to take that and say, you know what? This is us against the effing world. Don't you think? It already feels like that. You know, when it takes an you know me pulling teeth to get a Hurricane Ida relief benefit going, um, where it shouldn't have, I shouldn't have even had to ask. That should just be done. Um... It feels like there's a lot of, oh, well, hundreds of thousands of people didn't die in Louisiana in this hurricane, so we, they, they don't need help. Meanwhile, you've got people 10 hours in line at a gas station. You know, that's... that's Louisiana is being messed around right now, and I don't like it any bit. I don't like it one bit, and on top of it, the disrespect coming LSU's way from the national media... Ugh. But you know what? We're going to take this disrespect. We're going to take it. And we're going to shove it right up their ass. Okay? When this team takes that field at the Rose Bowl on Saturday... This isn't going to be a team. It's going to be an army of tigers ready to light that sunset up. We're getting ready to paint the Rose Bowl in Chip Kelly's blood. We are ready. Those powder blues are going to be powdered in red mist by the time this game is over with. We are going to stamp the purple and gold on that field. If you are not going out there with that mentality, you don't belong on that team. And from talking to the few Tigers I've been talking with in the last few days, guys like Sage Ryan, they're ready. You know, it's, it's hard to tell whether Sage is going to be healthy or not. He was keeping it pretty close to the vest. Me and him are joking around a little bit. But, you know... Top to bottom, these guys are ready. Pig Cage, he's fired up. Jay Ward is fired up. I'm telling you guys, Jay Ward is going to come out there ready to knock some people's lights out. Okay, We look at Jay Ward and we think, oh, he's going to get an interception. He's going to cause some fumbles. He's do Great, he's going to. He's probably going to create at least five turnovers this season. 
but he's also going to be lighting people up from safety, okay? I think he's going to have at least six, seven tackles in this game, maybe even a sack. Uh, If you look at what he did in the Mississippi State game last year on a torn meniscus, um, chases down K.J. Costello and almost causes a strip sack, um, that's what that guy's about. He's about just attacking the football wherever it is. But on a torn meniscus, he runs about 30 yards, chases K.J. Costello down the backfield on a corner blitz, and rips that ball out just just as he goes out of bounds. So it didn't count, but Jay Ward was right there. I'm telling you, Jay Ward's going to be ready to go. Across the board, Durante Jones is getting a lot of crap. Durante Jones is getting no respect, no love. People are saying this guy's never called a play. He doesn't know what he's doing. Well, I'm sorry. He's coming from the NFL. I think he knows a little about football, you know? You think? Like, my God, give this guy some credit. Uh, Here's the thing. A lot of these national media people haven't taken the time to actually watch LSU's practices. None of them probably even have access to scrimmage tapes. But I'm sure some of the Fox analysts who are going to be working the LSU-UCLA game could get access to whatever they wanted to. You know, barring, like, plays of an extreme, you know, top-secret nature, of course, things like that. Point is, they're all taking LSU lightly. They all think LSU, even if even if LSU wins, it's going to be by five, six. It's going to be this little patty cake performance where LSU, oh, we just barely beat Chip Kelly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just don't see that happening. Do you think those DBs can hang with Kayshawn Butte? And even if, say, they can limit Kayshawn Butte, they're going to be spending so much time trying to stop him Guys like Brian Thomas Jr. are going to be wide open. Guys like Jare Jenkins are going to be wide open. Coy Moore, if his injuries will allow him, I think he's going to be tearing them up over the over the middle, intermediary style, uh, getting a lot of uh, first downs, moving the chains. I don't know if UCLA's defense has what it takes to stop our running backs in the passing game either. That's a facet of the game that is not going to be talked about, but I'm telling you right now, it's going to play a big role in our offense. Running backs motioning out wide, motioning even into the slot, motioning out to be a a second left tackle in a way, auxiliary tight end. Like They're putting these running backs all over the place. And I remember um, back a year ago, before the 2020 season, saying that Eric Gilbert would be used in the slot and things like that. People mocked me, saying, you're tight end in the slot? (laughs) That's so stupid. What are you talking about? And I'm like, do you know how modern football works? Okay? If If you're calling plays according to position, if you're looking at players according to position... You're already doing it wrong, okay? You're already really screwing it, screwing it up, okay? Because the game now is about matchups. Guys like Jack Besh, guys like uh, Keishon Butte, Jare Jenkins, they're going to be moved according to where they can attack this defense the best. You know, salute to UCLA, but while they got a lot of pressure on Hawaii on almost every play, they were in Hawaii's face, which they should have been. I mean, literally just walking at the quarterback. They only had seven tackles for loss and two sacks. Ton of pressures, ton of quarterback hits, all that stuff, but just two sacks. You're telling me that Max Johnson is not going to have opportunities to to break that pressure down, escape, and then once he's escaped, he's going to have at least two or three options on the secondary routes? Like, 
I have a lot of confidence in this team. A lot of confidence in this team. Going into UCLA, going in the Rose Bowl, I feel like LSU are ready to get the smackdown going. If LSU cannot beat UCLA, if LSU cannot beat UCLA, at least in a convincing manner, then perhaps some of the things that went down last year haven't been fixed. Perhaps the coaching staff we hired just need a little bit of time to to adjust. But I feel like all in all, this team, this staff, even the state of Louisiana are not being respected like like they should. And um, I'm no Nostradamus. I can't really predict if LSU is going to come out there and, and play a stinker. But here's the thing. The only way LSU lose this game to UCLA is if LSU beat themselves. I'm going to tell you right now. The only way LSU lose this game is by penalties, screwing up on third down, getting constantly into these crazy situations defensively where we can't stop the run. That's the only way we lose this game. I know there's a lot of hype going to UCLA, talking about their experience, talking about their experience. I just, I, that's really what they've got going for them is experience. Well, they're about to experience an SEC LSU title wave. Go Tigers.